start law talk and it's the fastest moving hour in radio. So we welcome Mr. Court Froelich of the offices of Froelich, Ward and Beeson and the Law Talk Show. Welcome back. Wow, good, that was excellent. Thanks. Good, good morning, Jeff. Good I've morning, done it Tom. twice. Nice good to morning, see you both. I've, I've done, heard you. I've, I heard you on the way in. You've done it twice. Uh, perfectly. He got it right. Don't let it go to your head. He got it twice. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's two out of fifty. <laughs> what is that? I don't know what the percentage is. Oh. Good. good to see you guys. How was everyone's Thanksgiving? Yeah, very nice. Yeah, well, I'll I tell you what. Is the weather fantastic or what? I mean, it's just uh, just perfect. Crisp and yeah. clear, and uh, you know, we had a house full, too, right? a house full of uh, relatives and had a great time. Went out in the, the harbor twice with Chris on the boat uh, to get oysters. You know, yeah. they get really good this time. People don't realize what great oysters we have. As here long as they get, unless water's got to be cold. Right. You sure don't want to harvest them in August. I'll grant you that. Yeah. But the water's cold now. Trust me, I was in it. It's cold. And the oysters were were uh, were just incredible. So we got a bush. Now, do you need a license or anything to do that? No, you don't. Uh, you what don't. do you do? They've got, to be, they've got to be three inches, you know, there's size limitations, but uh, you don't need a license. Do you it's die for them or are you just... We're actually, you're just waiting. The best time oh, to go is low, is low tide, but right. we, we timed it wrong. Uh, the high tide was in the middle of the day, so it was high tide. So we're up in the water to our waist, and then you're yeah. reaching down to get the yeah. oysters. Oh, oh, and a little chilly, you yeah, know. And, uh, it, yeah, the only one that everybody got cold but my daughter, Kate, who is... Uh, Definitely the hunter-gatherer of our clan. She's something else. She was in the water the whole time, and she did get a mask and snorkel, Tom, and get down there, and she was the, uh, well, the, the oyster champion. Well, of course, when, when, you're, when you immerse your entire body, it, the rest of your body doesn't get cold. It, it, it's better, actually. Yes. But, but I, you couldn't convince me of that. Well, I, was, I went the first day, and it was uh, it was pretty chilly reaching down to get them, but, boy, it was sure worth it when we got home and, uh, and shucked them. So it was a, a great Thanksgiving, and uh, weather-wise, I mean, you can't help but appreciate living in southwest Florida over the four days of that holiday where it was cool and crisp in the morning and just bright sunshine and well, we got the call from McDermott on Saturday morning that he was uh, on the Pennsylvania Turnpike it was yeah. 26 degrees he was just getting in the mountains and it was snow it was starting to snow <laughs> yeah exa exactly that was it's uh, for, uh, this is a, this is a great time of year to be here no doubt about it uh, I I've got to ask you a quick question uh, okay. that I heard somebody was talking about uh, their son or daughter going into environmental law okay um and they're as as you and i both know environmental law is a unique very niche practice but and i guess it's there's an overabundance of our environmental lawyers right now it's a really hard area uh jeff it's it's a it's, it's an exciting area right oh, but, yeah. but it's a there aren't that many uh firms that practice in the environmental area. Uh, most of those jobs are government jobs, very frankly. Or working for somebody like Defenders of Wildlife or the Sierra Club. The St. John's River St. Project. St. John's River Project is a good example. They all use environmental lawyers. But you're talking about a very small uh, pool. Uh, a lot of people, though, have a calling. They want to be involved in, in uh, environmental issues, and that's where they want to go. But uh, it's it's not an easy place to, to get your foot in the door uh, because there's so many people that are interested in so few uh, openings and uh, I think for, but from a standpoint if you can get your foot in the door as an environmental lawyer you go to work for one of those organizations you've got it made because you're in-house counsel you're going to get all the benefits you're going to be able to have a wonderful retirement at some point in time uh, and not have to worry probably so much about your 401k because you're going to be a company employee and you can do a lot of good in the process as well well, they were talking, and, and the reason I brought it up this morning um, was because they said since the BP oil spill, is that an environmental lawsuit or not? Well, it's really not. It's a, it's a, it, it, there, there are certainly environmental issues. Uh, they're all environmental issues, but it's a negligence uh, lawsuit. And That's it's, what I thought, it's, it's yeah. not, it, that lawsuit is not being brought on behalf of the uh, plaintiff's class by environmental lawyers, I can assure you. They may, they, there may be some environmental lawyers that are consultants to the plaintiff's lawyers, but the, but the plaintiff's lawyers representing the plaintiffs in that lawsuit are, you know, a laundry list of the heavy hitter personal injury lawyers in the, in the state of Florida that do the same kind of work uh, that I do, uh, which is represent uh, people in negligence uh, cases. And okay. so that case against BP is sounding in negligence. It sounds in gross negligence, uh, be, which we've talked about before right. because of the, and now the, the, now we understand in light of what's happened in the last few weeks, you understand why this settlement fund that's been set up contains these very generous multipliers. The reason, it, it, <laughs> and we talked about that, that they have these generous multipliers in this BP settlement is because they have, it was criminal negligence. And there's going to be people uh, charged, they're going to be underlings, I think, but there's going to be people charged criminally. 
they've acknowledged basically that it was uh, gross neg not just simple negligence, but gross negligence, and that's why BP, to try to head this off at the pass, agreed to the settlement procedure, and we're involved in that, as you know, right. administering those claims in which there's multipliers, and the multipliers were agreed to by BP in a, as a substitute, as it were, really for the punitive damage exposure that they would have to individual claims. And uh, But it's not environmental lawyers that are driving uh, that bus. Now, in terms of uh, the federal government's uh, involvement, however, Jeff, and it's a good question, in terms of the federal government's involvement with BP and what will happen in the future and whether or not federal environmental regulations were, were violated, those are those are absolutely environmental lawyers working for the United States government that have chosen to go that path, and they are they are not trial lawyers necessarily. They're not representing people in negligence cases normally. Their whole focus is on the environmental aspects of it. So that's most most environmental law jobs are either in government or right. in in organizations that uh, are dedicated to protecting uh, Earth. Justice is the perfect example. Jay Gordon, my partner, my young partner, you, you, Jay, my bedbug boy, is, is, is a very environmentally conscious young man.